Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to our Harmony Islands, where in the last episode, we had a little bit of a situation regarding a whole bunch of rustling grass. Duke Rota managed to find this carnivore for one, which is cause for concern in itself, and we do need to deal with him straight away. But then, Takirku, way back here, managed to find somebody very, very special. And I'm sure you guys have noticed that this little baby who we found abandoned off in the grass looks almost like an exact reincarnation of the long-lost anime from many, many islands ago. So her name is Lanair, and she has some amazing genetics on her, including two claws, those double claws again, so she's a little beast. She has the ram horn, she has violet eyes tucked away in her genetics, and of course the panda patterns too. She does have a mutagene gene B, which is kind of surprising and a little bit ironic because everybody except for two creatures on our island right now have a mutagene gene B, so that may become a problem in the future, but right now we need to deal with this carnivore. So our warriors are off on this side of the island, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I do believe that they can actually make their way over there. We might have to have somebody clear out the grass so that they can access the carnivore, but I think they can do it. Like, Izrys can just make it to the edge of this grass. Um, Duke Rota, we're going to keep right here. We're going to sit him right next to the carnivore, and we'll see if he needs to kind of jump out of the way um, at the end of the turn. We'll see if he can, like, land the last blow with his <laughs> measly one point in um, strength or if he needs to actually jump out of the way to save himself. So let's see, Roro Duke. Unfortunately, most of these sons have not um, fully grown yet, so they only have two turns to use. But if we stick Roro Duke right here, he can peek in this grass, and then we can have maybe Kuvanro come a little bit closer. Um, or we could have Kuku Duke help him out first by sitting right here, because the carnivore can't reach him, I don't think, right here, unless he moves, but he's more likely, I think, to snag one of the ones that are right next to him. So we'll have Cuckoo Duke peek in this grass, and then hopefully Kirvanro can scoot up here and poison him. That'll help us out a little bit, um, especially if we can't work him down all the way. So let's see, why don't we also have Kirvan here come over here, and he can start carving paths off this way a little bit? And then we can hopefully have Izrys come in and like swoop in, just snag this guy. Um, I do think we're going to have to have some of them move away though. I don't think we have any free spaces left. So let's see, we do want Marira to get out of the way as soon as possible since she is just a child herself. Um, it would be wonderful if Lanair was a little bit more grown than she is because she only has one turn since she's a tiny, tiny baby. So Marira, why don't you sit next to Lanair and keep her safe? And then we'll have Duke Rota just land one hit, and then he can uh, scoot away to off to his berry bushes. So let's see, um, Laresi, you can at least scoot a little bit closer so you can help pretty soon. Um, I thought I saw, oh my gosh, a bunny. I did see a bunny. I did see a bunny scoot over here. Um, you can actually grab this bunny for us. Thank you. She doesn't have any turns to pick up the meat, but we'll do that in the next turn too. Um, that's pretty good. Even though Marira is not technically a bunny duty member, she is still helping out the pack. So Rala, we want you to get a little bit closer too so you can help out in the next turn, and then we'll skip ahead and see who he attacks. Um, it might be Kirvan here at this point. Um, hopefully it won't be Kirvan Ro because of course we're using him for his poison fangs, and um, Izrys is also in the line of trouble right now. So let's see which one he goes for. Oh, Kirvan Ro, of course it had to be you. Two hits on poor Kirvan Ro, but at least he managed to poison him, so that did take off a little bit more damage. And now we can definitely take care of this guy, and I see Lanair is already growing back here. She has two gems now, and I have something special in mind for her gems, since she's kind of like the goddess reborn on our pack. So let's see, we want to hopefully just get rid of this guy, as Reese can attack him since she has the highest strength. There we go. And then she could pick up the meat too, since she was able to take him out all by herself. So why don't we have you pick up your bunny meat now so we don't forget about that. And then we can take a look at the rest of the pack here, the rest of the state of this pack. So we definitely need to breed Marira once she grows up, since she's one of the few who does not have immunity gene B in her genetics. And the other one was actually over here, Laresi. She has F and A. And uh, her first child was Marasi, who was kind of also like the reincarnation of Maram from earlier in the pack. So we want her to have another baby as soon as possible, especially since some um, Kirvanro just got injured. So we'll have him breed with her, and then we'll scoot Marasi right out of the nest so that her mother can come over here and um, have another baby. And I believe we still have, yeah, the immunity genes are in here from their litter from before, so that should be fine. We're leaving the poison fangs in there just in the <laughs> slight 
hopes that maybe it'll override those um, spit snouts. And of course the claw because they are warriors. And I believe we actually have to change our little gem. There we go, Marasi is now officially a warrior too because she has the orange gem. And um, we are going to start working on her gems too. So I would like to give her each color of gems since she is our little goddess reborn. So when she grows her third gem, we'll give her a little blue one to go with it as well. And I think that'll be nice. Unfortunately, she can't collect from any of these bushes because she has two claws. So we're going to move her away from this area. We can actually stick her over here so that she'll be very well protected with the rest of the pack. And then let's see, Duke Rota, maybe you could sit here instead and then scoop up all of the berries. That might be a good idea since he has the berry paw he should probably be the one collecting and then um, we'll have to find a place for Marira too but we want her to stay near the rest of the pack as well just because she is blind so if she gets separated she won't be able to find her way back. I was thinking what we might actually do is breed her with Takirku since they both have um, those stripes and he does have the antlers in his genetics too so maybe we could grow um, a little tiny line of deer gatherers if we wanted to. Um, and he also has both of the running legs too which would be good since she has one no paw. We kind of want to try again to breathe that out. It snuck its way back in once we um, brought that little wanderer into the pack but hopefully we can breathe that out soon. So let's try to spread out our gatherers a little bit more. Kirvan Kir can come over here and scoop up these berries and then Marira can help um, them pick these for now until we find a better spot for her. Dakirku can pick up these two with his double running legs. Um, right now, the main thing I'm waiting for is food. Once we have a couple hundred pieces of food, I think we will hopefully be migrating off to this island. We can only bring, I think it's nine different creatures, so we will have to figure out which pairs we're going to bring along with us, which ones are going to help us survive. Obviously, if Lanera is still alive at that point, she is definitely coming with us, um, but that should be fun to do. Hopefully we'll be able to do that soon because we have been collecting food at a pretty fast rate so far. So Roro Duke, why don't we have you sit over here so you can pick up a couple of these at least. It's not going to be much because he also has that no paw, so he is a little bit crippled. Um, Kirvanro can at least peek in this grass and come over here for the next turn. Cuckoo Duke is still not fully grown. Um, I believe we had planned to breed him with Rala and hopefully he's going to grow up soon because I've noticed that she is about halfway through her lifespan at this point. Um, she can at least come over here and pick up these um, acorns for us and she can headbutt the tree to bring a couple more down for um, the rest of the pack to collect too. And I think Laresi can actually pick a couple berries herself. We have so many berries now because of course we had that amazing rainfall. But um, it looks like you are the only one left. Oh no. Oh no, I saw something rustle over here. Um, we do have to check that out, but I don't think you're the one to do it. Let's at least have you come over <laughs> over here. Well, that was convenient. Okay, let's snag you, little bunny. And once we have um, our energy back, we'll pick up all of that meat and um, all of those acorns too. And there's the spit snout again. So this is definitely our spit snout line, it looks like. And Aresi is her name. Um, she does have the blind eyes hidden away, but she doesn't have immunity gene B. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Kids um, without the immunity immunity gene B will definitely help us especially as we migrate to the next island because we need to have a little bit of a, a wider pool for those immunity genes. Now it looks like um, Cuckoo Duke actually grew up. There we go. So we can have them collect all of that food and then hopefully Rala can scoot off to um, a nest of her own. And it looks like oh my goodness Marira also grew up. So let's change her gem before we forget about that. She does need to wait for Takirku to grow up in the meantime. But um, it looks like we're doing pretty good. Okay, so we need to, let's see, we'll probably bring Rala down to, oh, wait a second, she has a nest up here. We'll bring her to this nest. So let's see if we can have Cuckoo Duke pick up the food and then we'll have um, her breed with him because she can just scoot over here in two turns. There we go. And then he can continue picking up the acorns for now. We do need to kind of like settle these guys down by this tree so they can pick up all of this food because it is quite helpful. Two pieces of food per um, acorn is not bad at all. And let's see, we want them to keep the same um, claw in their genetics because they are also warriors. But instead of the poison fangs, what else should we add here? I might pop the normal eyes in here instead, just because we know that Rala has the blindness trait in her genetics. So hopefully her children won't be born with that. Um, we can cross our fingers anyway. We just don't want those hidden genes lingering around all of our pack members as we're trying to pair them off because it's going to make it very, very hard to make sure that our pack is healthy. Marasi actually can't help out because she has a no paw. She um, does not have any gathering skill, does she? No, she doesn't. She's a little bit strong, but she does 
does not have any way of gathering these berries, so we don't really want to stick her by the berries. We'll stick her up here so that somebody like Kier Von Kier can come down here and pick up the berries instead. There we go. And let's see, Isreese, we might as well keep you over here to uh, protect this side of the island since we do need to spread out our warriors a little bit more, I guess. That was almost a very bad situation with that carnivore, but they managed to uh, get there in time. So Duke Rota can pick up these. He is getting very close to the end of his life too. Um, I wonder if we can possibly breed anyone else with him. I mean, we want to keep the fairy paws in our lines too. We want to make sure that we bring some collectors and some warriors and even some scouts over to uh, the next island. So the fairy paws are very essential. I guess Marira is probably going to be like the mother of that entire line um, as we continue on. But let's see if we can move her. Um, I guess she could pick up these berries and then we can move her just a little bit further to the middle of the pack so that she can pick from some of these bushes which haven't been uh, picked clean just yet. And then I think we can skip the turn. I mean, we have Lanaire sitting over here, but unfortunately she doesn't have too much to do right now since she can't collect either. Um, she could peek in some of this grass for us. That might help us out a little bit. And then um, we'll skip the turn now. And there we go. Some of them are growing up too, so that's good to see. We'll have to uh, make sure that we are properly pairing them off now. And there's another baby. Oh my gosh, look at you. Unfortunately, she does have the no paw. That's not very good. Oh, another LeMay. Okay, so we had LeMay in um, the previous island too, but of course they looked very different from this one. Um, they do have double immunity gene bees, which is not ideal but that will help us out in the future just knowing that we only have to look out for a male without immunity gene B. That's why it is so essential that we keep breeding these different pairs without them. And um, apparently we need to find some sons without immunity gene B as well. So that's what we'll have to work on next, I guess. Um, luckily, Takirku has grown, so he will be able to breed with um, our little berry collector over here, Marira. And to do that, I do want to swap around these a little bit. Um, we'll place the berry pawn here instead and then hopefully their children will be born with um, the berry paws. So let's have Takirku kind of follow her off this way so that they can maybe use this nest way down here. We'll have him breed with her, and then um, let's see, we are going to have to have somebody escort her over to that nest anyway, so why don't we just have her pick the berries for now? Um, Cuckoo Duke actually could do, oh wait a second, what are you doing? What are you doing over here, Roru Duke? You're just like hiding this little bunny from me under all of your fluff. <laughs> When on earth did that bunny get there? Okay, well, we need to uh, keep that in our stores. We need to collect as much food as possible, so you can't be keeping pet bunnies, I'm sorry. Um, Cuckoo Duke, you can come over here and escort um, little Marira to this nest pretty soon, so we'll stick her right there for now. Um, Kirvan Kier can pick some of these berries for us, thank you very much. And Kirvan Ro, I think we're going to want to have another baby with you, so that we can hopefully get another one like Anaresi without immunity gene B. So NRSC, we're going to have to scoot you right out of the nest and then you can come over here. This will set them up for the next turn, I think, because of course we want to switch around the mutation menu pretty soon. So instead they can just collect the berries for now, collect all the berries that they can manage. Um, there we go. I think that's good. We have a couple of acorns over here, but it looks like he can't really collect those. He can grab these though. And another little bunny. You were just calling all the bunnies over here today, aren't you? Well, I want you to keep a very close eye on that one, okay? Um, it looks like we can change your little gem as well. And how close are you to growing up? Oh, very close. All right, we're getting very, very close to being able to properly bring Lanair into the pack as our goddess, as our little queen. Um, let's see, we have a couple more turns over here to do as well, so we can gather up the acorns. Um, you might as well headbutt the tree too, so we can gather up even more. Um, you can grab these and all of your berries. And where is that bunny now? Oh my goodness, seriously, he is just calling all of the bunnies to him now. Well, I think we're going to skip the turn um, so he can maybe snatch up a few of those because we could use the extra food. Um, okay, so Roro Duke, why don't you pounce on this guy? And that one has scooted way off. Um, actually, why don't you come right here? Oh my gosh, all of these bunnies. Okay, so we're going to leave him there with his one turn and we'll have somebody else come up to collect the meat just in case one of them hops close enough for him to snag. He's almost like Meme from the last pack too. Like he obviously has some way of talking to the bunnies himself. And now Lanier is fully grown. Oh, look at you. We'll give you your final gem. She now has all of the colors of the gems because she is our goddess reborn and a meme. So there we go. We can take that as a wonderful sign for everything to come and hopefully we can find somebody to breed her with two. We're going to have to figure that out very, very soon. 
Um, of course, she has bees, so we can't really pay too much attention to that because every single male on the island right now has bee. Um, but let's finish escorting you, Marira, over to this nest. Um, we're keeping a very close eye on all of those bunnies. A very, very close eye. Um, oh dear, oh dear, you don't have um, a way of seeing that one. I did not notice that. So we'll put Cuckoo right over here and then Marira can finish her little journey over to this nest. There we go. Um, and I think all of the bunnies have scattered. Um, though one of them might be in this darkness. So Takirku, can you like scoot over here? Yeah, these bunnies are just everywhere in this darkness right now. So we really need to kind of like spread these guys out to try to find them. Um, let's have you pick up these. And <laughs> this bunny is getting dangerously close. Why don't you headbutt the tree? And then uh, Marasi. You can pounce on this guy actually, can't you? There you go. So you're learning to be a warrior already too, which is pretty good. And can anyone pick up that meat? Um, Kirvanro can come over here and pick it up, and then we'll bring him back in the next turn, I suppose. Um, because we do need to wait, of course, for Marira to give birth. And now it's just these guys over here with all of their food to collect, even little bunnies. Rala, this is your turn to pounce on the bunny and collect the meat for us. There we go. You can teach your little child how to hunt because she should also be a warrior with her claw. And then, let's see, you have a few things to collect too. Why don't you come over here and gather up the acorns for us? You can gather up this one. And then let's at least bring Lanair a little bit closer to the center of the island so that we know that, of course, she is very well protected. We can put her right here so she can see a little bit more. There we go. And then you might as well pick up this, I guess. I mean, <laughs> at this point, you might as well. Um, I think that's about it for turns. Let's skip again and hope that nobody passes away. I don't think anyone has passed yet this episode, so that's a little bit concerning. I'm sure some of them are getting quite old. Oh no, what is that going to be now? Oh geez, Duke Rocha, this is your very last turn too. Are you ready to see what is in this grass? Hopefully it's a little bit better than last time. Oh my gosh, it's a lot better than last time. Hello. You are adorable. La Anime, I believe her name is. And there she has the violet eyes in her recessive slot too. Anime and Eugene B, this is quite interesting. This bee is following us around even when um, they're not members of our own pack. So that's a little bit unfortunate. You don't have the best of genetics, but you are adorable nonetheless. So we are very glad to have you in our pack now. And it is much better than a carnivore. I am very happy that Duke Rota didn't have to deal with yet another carnivore on his very last turn. And in fact, what we could do is have him breed with her. Um, I know the genetics don't match up perfectly because of the immunity gene, but that would be his final baby since this is his final turn and he did manage to find her on his very final turn. So that might be a good idea. And then they could carry on the uh, berry paws too, because we do need to do that um, as much as possible. But we also need to check up on the little baby over here. That reminds me. And look at you. Oh my goodness, look at you. You are a little boy, Kiro. He does have immunity gene B still. For some reason, that is just stuck to the members of her pack. He does still have the no paw, which is quite unfortunate. I wonder if it would be easier just to kind of like start from scratch like we did with Adam and place maybe the running legs in here because for some reason, it seems like the running legs are a little bit easier to pass than like um, the berry paws or the claws. I guess they're less rare. So let's see, um, are any of these guys blind? Well, Ducrota is not. La Anime does have the blindness in her recessives, but we could at least swap these around a little bit to hopefully get rid of the uh, no-paw situation because now again, we're bringing in another new pack member who unfortunately does have the no-paw. So let's go ahead and have Ducrota breed with her and then she can actually scoot right over to this nest and hopefully have a nice little berry pod baby. And then you can pick up the rest of these berries with your very last turn, Duke Rota. So you have certainly been a very valuable member of the pack just based on all of the different things you've managed to find for us. And here come the bunnies again. Oh my goodness. Roro Duke, can you pounce on this guy? There we go. Very, very lazy bunny over there. And now I believe we just have a ton of berries to collect. We can bring Kirvan here a little bit closer to uh, these berry bushes since he has the double berry paws and he should definitely be between two of them. And then we can have Takirku pick up these acorns over here and um, Kirvanro can pick up a couple too and then we'll place him right over here back next to his mate so that in the next turn hopefully he'll be able to finally have a, a little baby. So let's go ahead after we pick up this acorn too we'll go ahead and see what this baby is going to be right before we end out the episode. Oh and Duke Rota and it rained again. What is with that? It's like every time somebody passes away a very experienced member of the pack passes away anyway it ends up raining. That's kind of neat. Um, okay, so look at you. You are adorable. And we managed to get rid of that no paw too. So that might be the way to do it. 
putting this sort of combination in here might be the way. And she managed to pass the violet eyes. Oh my goodness, she has normal eyes in her recessives. And her name is Coca-Cola, I believe. <laughs> That's an adorable name, too. Oh my goodness, I love her. She is gorgeous. Oh, that is really cool. I am very glad that we managed to find um, La Enemy. And in fact, we might want to change her little gems over to blue since she's like an honorary member of um, the berry picking family. So there we go. We're doing pretty good. We have a couple more um, gems to change over here as well. And I think we are well on our way to hopefully migrating to the next island pretty soon. Like I said, I'm just trying to gather up as much food as possible. You guys have let me know that maybe I should think about a couple hundred, uh, maybe 200, 300, maybe even 400, somewhere around there. But we're gathering it pretty fast, so I'm glad to see that. Hopefully pretty soon, especially with all of this rainfall, we'll be able to uh, do just that. So I think to end up the episode, we'll just have these guys pick up a couple of these, since we know that the berry bushes like to kind of re populate after we load up the game again so it might be worth it and then um, we should have a whole bunch of food to uh, last us through the rest of our turn so there we go there we go we're doing pretty good guys so thank you all so much for watching today and i will see you all next time bye guys